We're on day two of painting the entire Hoenn map. Today, we're covering Petalburg Woods right through to Rostov Tunnel, and along the way, we'll cross off a few more Pokemon from our Pokedex. Now let's get moving. Picking up where we left off, it's time for Petalburg Woods. Last time I was saying I wanted to try pushing the paintings more, so here I decided what if we tear right away from the actual map and just paint something that goes all in on storytelling. So I painted the scene where you have to fight off the Team Magma Grunt to protect the Devon Corp guy. I really liked the look of the whole middle section, but I started to think it was pushing too far away from the goal of painting the entire Hoenn map. I mean, it looks cool, sure, but if you're stretching it this far, it's not really a painting of the Hoenn map anymore. It's good to limit test and see where the lines are in a project, but rather than just course correcting when I move on to the next painting, I wanted to try bringing it back around still with this one. So I added the extra comic panels in the corners, one with a zoomed out view of the forest like usual, and another with Carrot and the Devon Corp guy celebrating as they leave the forest to add some more story that moves between them all. As I go, I'm realising just how bad I am at drawing and painting Pokemon. I haven't spent any time at all on creature design, so it's been a fun challenge. I think I want to do some future paintings in a different style though, one where the trainer and their Pokemon are the full focus rather than just a background element, kind of like they are here but without the squashed down chibi sort of look to them. When I finished this I was kind of on the fence about it, I still like the middle section but I think the extra panels just made it lose focus a little bit. They're really eye grabbing which makes it feel a little messy maybe? Oh well, on to the next one. Out of the woods, it's time for the north side of Route 104. This time I set myself a new challenge, mostly I draw on my PC with my Cintiq. I love that thing to death, I use it so much. But back in 2019 I bought an iPad thinking I'd take it with me everywhere and use it for digital art on the go. Now I used it a decent little bit back then, but honestly by now it's just become a portable YouTube player. So seeing as each of these videos are about 40 hours of painting time, I figured I should get Procreate back out and work that into my routine. That way I can digi-paint outside in the sun instead of hunched over my Cintiq screen, wahoo! Only problem is, drawing on the iPad is super not comfy. I couldn't tell you why, everything about it is kind of perfect for art, I think I'm just too used to using my Cintiq, so really the challenge here is just in learning to adapt to it. I was worried too that the time-lapse wouldn't work well for videos since recording Clip Studio and OBS gives me way more control. But it turns out it's actually way better, the Procreate timelapse exports in 4K which is a way higher resolution than my computer monitor. So basically I can zoom the camera in 4 times more without it getting blurry, and I also don't have to worry about bumping the canvas and making the recording a pain to edit which is really really sweet. But yeah, by the end it turned out alright. Maybe a bit too strong on the saturation, maybe? With this one I also started hiding people who have left comments in here, so at chaotic doodle you are the first. Rossboro City Time Okay, working on this one I realised I had a problem. Normally when I paint I'll spend a max of about 4-5 to five hours on one canvas, any longer and I'm just bored out of my mind. I like coming up with ideas and spitting them out quick, but with these Hoenn paintings I just keep pushing it further and further. This one ended up being uh, 9.5 and a half hours, that first Petalburg Forest one 13 hours and 50 minutes, and it's because I just keep upping the scale. Like this one here is essentially three paintings in one, there's the middle section where I'm actually painting the map, but also the two additional side panels? What am I doing? I'll never finish the map if I keep going like this. And I don't think adding more necessarily makes the paintings more interesting either, because the more is just competing for your attention. So from now on, at least for a little while, focus is going to be the goal, one idea at a time. Also, I've gotten a ton of really nice comments on my last few videos, and in those videos I said you guys should tell me who your favourite Pokemon from Hoenn are. So I knew that going into Rossboro City I'd want to include as many of you as I could fit. I didn't get to all of them, so there's still a few to go, but to these four, welcome to Hoenn, you're now officially a part of the world. And with that we can also cross off four more Pokemon from our decks. Returning to the more single focus paintings now, we're on Route 115. I feel like this is probably the most overlooked and easily forgettable route in the whole region, which is a shame because it's also one of the cooler ones I think. When you come out the north side of Rossboro for the first time, you can't get very far here since you need surf to really explore it. But then later on when you loop back around here through the Meteor Falls exit, you still can't explore it properly because surf doesn't come up until after the 5th gym. 
That section up the back with the tiny patch of grass hidden in the trees, yeah, I love it there because it's the earliest point in the game you can catch Swablu. And who didn't dream of having an Altaria on their team as a kid? It was the first dragon type that wasn't impossibly hard to get as a 10 year old. I guess there was Kingdra too, but you needed friends who played Pokemon to get that so you could trade, and imagine putting a lonely tax into your game about catching friends. Shame on you, game freak. <laughs> This one was kind of tricky to paint because the area is very vertical, but I'm trying to do these paintings horizontal for the video. Looking back, I guess I could have just drawn it from the side. That would have been a really cool view, looking up at the side of Meteor Falls, which is already really tall, but with it being completely dwarfed by Mount Chimney towering above in the background, the scale would have been crazy. Oh well, can always redo it later, or take that same idea into a new area. Oh yeah, and at Mini Gamer King, your wishes come true. You with your Chinchow vs Carrot with Ralts fighting on the beach. Route 116. I actually did this one before the previous, but it makes more sense to shuffle them around for the video since this is the order you'd probably walk into them playing through the games. Up to this point, the theme for this arc of the journey was to push the colours. From Petalburg Woods to Rustboro City, I banned green from my colour wheel entirely, and the results were... mixed? Interesting? I don't know. <laughs> they were a lot of fun, but a little weird looking too. So with this one and 115 as well, I was allowed to use green again, and it feels a little more balanced now. I'm mixing in other colours a little more evenly, and the green isn't so highly saturated anymore, so taking baby steps forward. The extra little challenges like this are good for picking specific things to improve at. Turns it into a bit of a game and makes it way more fun. One of my favourite things about the Hoenn region is how everything ties back together. The cave up the end of this route takes you through to Verdenturf Town, which is my favourite town in the game. Going past there and around to Meteor Falls brings you back down to Rossboro, where we just came from. From just above Oldale Town, you can surf over to Cycling Road. Everything feels super interconnected here and gives the whole region a cozy vibe. I can't wait to start painting the towns from Slateport City forward, those are going to be a lot of fun. They'll probably end up being in part 3 and 4, so there's a little ways to go before then. But with this one done, we can cross off 3 more Pokemon, bringing our total now to 30 of 135. The final painting for day number 2, Rustoff Tunnel. Something I've noticed while doing these paintings is that how I feel about them once they're done is completely separate to how I felt while actually working on them. Starting a new project can be kinda slow sometimes. I'll feel really lethargic and lazy like my brain is pulling out every trick it knows just to try and get me to stop doing the things I want to do. Like come on, what gives? I want to be doing this stuff so why are you getting in my way? I guess that doing things just takes more effort than watching YouTube all day so it can feel like a constant battle against my brain to focus on the things I actually care about. Like even now, writing this script and doing the voiceover, it's what I want to be doing. It's a lot of fun bringing the whole project together like this, and yet I've found myself sitting here for the last 40 minutes struggling to get any ideas out at all for what to say about this final painting. I don't know, it's like, even though it's the thing I want to do, since I have the option not to and that that takes less effort, I might as well do nothing instead, right? But I don't want to do nothing, I want to make cool stuff. I don't know, I don't have the solution to this yet. Making art is hard, but very rarely is it because actually making art is the hard part. It's just the everything else that gets in the way. But that's part of why I wanted to do this series. Having a project to work on gives me more of a reason to keep pushing with it. So I'll just figure it out with time, I suppose. And with this one done, that makes 32 of 135 down from the Hoenn Pokedex. But wait, another quick preview for day 3 this time. Next episode we'll be heading down to Doofordtown and up towards Slateport City, so stick around for when that comes out.